Okay, so welcome to this next video on uh, the PI3 kinase uh, AKT mTOR pathway. Okay, so so far, the point that we've got to is we have this growth factor receptor dimer, where both of the growth factor receptors that are in this dimer have growth factor bound to them. And autophosphorylation has now occurred, where you have added these phosphate groups onto the intracellular uh, domains of um, the um, um, growth factor receptors. Okay, so now what's going to happen is it's going to recruit downstream signaling uh, pathways. And the first enzyme that's going to come in here and bind to these phosphorylated tyrosine residues is an enzyme known as PI3 kinase, after which this entire pathway is um, is well one of the thing free out of uh, after which this pathway is named. So this is PI free kinase, which is often denoted PI three K. Okay, right. So PI free kinase has a lot of different names. So uh, one is people will just denote it as PI three K. Some people, when they speak PI three K, they won't generally actually say PI3K. Instead, they'll say PI3, and then they'll say kinase. Now, other people will actually say phosphoinositide free kinase, uh, i.e. they will expand this um, PI here, so phosphoinositide um, free kinase. Okay? And I think it should generally actually have those, um, those dashes in between the free and the kinase and the PI. Okay, and some people will expand the PI even more and tell you exactly which phosphoinositide it is adding a phosphate group on. Uh, so some people will actually call it phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate. Phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate free kinase. Okay, and that tells you exactly what it's doing. It's acting on the molecule phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, and it's adding a phosphate group onto the third carbon of uh, the inositol group, actually, it'll turn out. So it will make phosphatidylinositol 3,4,5-trisphosphate. Okay, so let's give this enzyme a nice colour in. Uh, I don't want to use... Well, I will use pink. Okay, so pink will denote this enzyme in pink. And basically, what it's now going to do is it's going to start phosphorylating phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate. Um, okay, and what is phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate? Well, basically, it is a, a component of the usual phospholipid bilayer. So let's say we have the phospholipid bilayer here. Okay, well, basically, one of the components of the phospholipid bilayer is normal old phospholipids. That's the main component of the phospholipid by there. And we can denote a phospholipid like so. It has two hydrophobic tails, which are long chain carboxylic acids, or fatty acids, esterified to the first two hydroxyl groups of glycerol, which is this horizontal line here. And then off the third hydroxyl group of glycerol, you have then put a phosphate group. So we can denote phospholipids like so, and I will just highlight each of the di different components. So in pink we have the phosphate group which makes the phospholipid a phospholipid. In green we have the glycerol molecule and then in orange we have the long chain carboxylic acids coming off down there. Okay so this is a phospholipid, a normal old phospholipid and it's basically based on the structure of glycerol and it has two long chain carboxylic acids bound to it. Uh, and um, a uh, phosphate bound to the third hydroxyl group. So this is a phospholipid. The other name people sometimes use, the old biochemist's name, is it phospholipids are sometimes referred to as phosphatidate molecules. So some people will refer to phospholipids as phosphatidate. Now that's hopeful because if we're trying to work out what phosphatidyl inositol is, it suggests that it is based on this phosphatidate molecule. And now let me just label up the different components of this phosphatidate molecule. So these orange, um, orange tails here, these were the hydrophobic tails, and they were basically fatty acids esterified to the glycerol molecule, which is in green. So in green, we have glycerol, glycerol, 
or propane one two three trial if you're being a chemist and this phos pink sort of ball denotes the phosphate group okay and the entire molecule is a phosphatidate molecule right okay so if we're going to make phosphatidyl in ositol 4,5 bisphosphate then we take phosphatidate and we link it to an ositol 4,5 bisphosphate basically so let's draw another one of these um, phosphatidate molecules like so okay so color everything in again so green for the glycerol molecule here Orange for the two um, hydrophobic tails, which are free, well, not free fatty acids, but esterified fatty acids, and a uh, phosphate group there in pink. Okay, and now, off this phosphate group, you now bind inositol, basically. Okay, so that's what it means, phosphatidyl inositol. It basically means that you have um, inositol then with this entire phosphatidate molecule sort of stuck off the side of the inositol. Now, inositol is a six-carbon uh, ring, basically, and off every single one of the carbons, you have one and only one hydroxyl group. So, imagine drawing a six-carbon ring. In fact, try to draw a six-carbon ring. So, over here, off the side, you have six carbons, because phosphat inositol is generally the molecule people haven't heard of. So, you have a six-carbon ring, then off every single carbon, stick a hydroxyl group, like so. And then, uh, each carbon needs one more group bonded to it, because it needs four bonds overall. And now just stick hydrogens, basically, uh, off all the rest. So make every, every other bond up with a hydrogen, basically. Okay, so here's hydrogen, and here's another hydrogen. So that's the structure of inositol. And that's what we're denoting in blue, basically. So this is inositol in here. Okay, so so far what I have made, this entire structure, is phosphatidyl inositol. Okay, so I've just linked the phosphate group to one of these hydroxyl groups off the, what we're going to call the first carbon over here. Now we've got phosphate groups sticking off the fourth and the fifth carbon. So here is the fourth carbon over here, and here is the fifth carbon. And for the life of me, I do not know why they um, called this molecule phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate rather than phosphatidyl inositol 3, 4 bisphosphate. But for some reason, they decided that this carbon that the phosphate is off should be called the fifth carbon rather than the third carbon. Okay, never mind. Um, so that now is the structure of phosphatidyl inositol 4,5 bisphosphate. And because phosphatidyl and ositol 4, 5 bisphosphate is a bit of a mouthful, people often denote this PI for phosphatidyl and ositol, and then P2 to denote that you've got two phosphate groups sticking off it, basically. Okay, now, uh, PI free kinase, or phosphatidyl and ositol 4, 5 bisphosphate free kinase, is basically just going to take this molecule and it's going to stick another phosphate group off it. So, uh, it's going to stick a phosphate group onto this third carbon um, of the inositol molecule. So what it's going to do is it's going to convert this molecule from that to, let's redraw it out again. So here are the uh, long chain carboxylic acids, the styrified to the glycerol molecule. So let me color everything in. So um, green for glycerol. Orange for the long chain carboxylic acids here, is styrified to the first and second hydroxyl groups of the glycerol. Then we've got this phosphate group down here, which comes off the third hydroxyl group of the glycerol. Then our inositol molecule here. And now we've got phosphate groups coming off the fourth and the fifth carbons as before, but now also one coming off this third carbon. Okay, so this is the structure of phosphatidyl inositol. 3, 4, 5, trisphosphate. Okay, so I'll write that entire great name out in a moment. Right, where shall I write it? Okay, um, so I'll do it on the side here. So this is phosphatidyl, phosphatidyl inositol, inositol, uh, 3, 4, 5, trisphosphate. And again, that's a big mouthful. So, people often denote it PI for phosphatidyl inositol, and then they put P3 to denote that you have three phosphate groups off. So, this is often referred to as PIP3. Okay, so that 
is overall what this um, enzyme, PI3 kinase, does. It catalyzes this reaction, basically. It converts PIP2 into PIP3, and PIP3 also stays within the membrane. So you'll notice that both of these, both PIP2 and PIP3, are effectively just modified phospholipids. So they quite happily sit in the cell membrane, and they just have these groups, these larger heads sticking off the side, either into the cytoplasm or into the uh, extracellular space. So, PIP3 is recruited to the membrane by these, um, by this activated um, growth factor dimer here, uh, PIP3 kinase rather, and uh, it converts the PIP2 in the cell membrane into uh, PIP3. Okay, so what we now need to see is what does PIP3 do? And we'll talk about that in the next video.